Dive in the deep end, it's time to defend your movie. Hello friends and welcome to our next episode of Defending Your Movie. I am your host, Jeremy Meyer. So today we're actually going to be talking about a movie. Uh, if you listen to our first episode, it was a conversation with Matthew Rory, which was a lot of fun and I hope you got to check it out. But today we are actually talking about a movie. And this is one that I personally picked, you know, being the first episode, it was something where I had to pick a movie to get the show started, and I decided to go with a movie that is kind of important to me for a couple reasons. The main reason is because I just legitimately love this movie, like Prometheus is one of my favorite sci-fi movies, and it's a movie that has kind of a stigma, so it's something that I wanted to make sure was covered on the show just because like I I feel like it's a movie that has kind of a bad rap and I think it's fucking great I shouldn't swear but um but I think it's great so I kind of just wanted to have this be one of the early ones I talked about again also because this movie is why I was a podcaster to begin with and it's a little bit of a roundabout story but basically my uh, original podcast the shelled film podcast wouldn't exist if it wasn't for reading an early script of Prometheus that was originally called Alien Engineers, and you can find that in the backlog of episodes um, in the shelved podcast, you know, season. Uh, But yeah, so like, when it came time to do this show, I wanted to make sure that this was included, and I was like, honestly, it might as well just be the first episode. Uh, So I reached out to, you know, my group of friends or my growing group of friends, because this was actually an episode. uh, So I did this with a man named Jesse Ferguson, who is also the host of a podcast called Recorded Tomorrow, which is a time travel podcast. Uh, I'd actually learned about it on the show. You'll hear about it at the end there. And um, he was, you know, I met a bunch of people from another podcast called Film Rescue. And you're going to hear a lot from these people in the coming days, because a lot of them are my first guests because, you know, they've been so kind to me. I wanted to kind of show my thanks and, you know, that I'm in their discord. So I've reached out and got a lot of guests through there and have met some really interesting people. So a lot of my early guests are actually going to be coming from the film rescue discord and they've all been super nice, super great people. Uh, Jesse was the first one I podcasted with. Um, this was actually the first episode I did record. Uh, I was debating of like, Oh, which ones do I want to post? But uh, I do think the first one should be the first one. So um, I'm I'm super excited for this to be kind of the first movie of the show. Uh, it was a really fun episode. Uh, Jesse was a really nice person and, you know, we had a fun conversation and it was actually his first time seeing the movie, which a lot of these movies are going to be the first time that I'm seeing them because people are going to be picking movies that have, I've never heard of. So it's kind of fun to have that dynamic on the show where somebody is coming to it for the first time versus somebody who has a great passion for it. And I think that's going to be a common theme throughout the episodes. But uh, before we get into the conversation, let's get the uh, the bookkeeping out of the way. As usual, you can follow our social medias at Defending Movie. Uh, be sure to check out our Patreon at Defending, or uh, sorry, patreon.com slash Defending Movie. And then check out our merch store, at belowthecollar.com slash defending your movie. And without further ado, here is our first defending your movie episode on the sci fi film Prometheus. Okay, so I'm I'm so glad that this was the first time you saw this movie because <laughs> I remember my first time seeing this movie. And I will say I'll come from the point of the defendee. That when I saw it the first time, first of all, I love this movie, and I know a lot of people don't. Um, (laughs) I will say that love had to grow on me. Uh, The first, the first time I saw it, I liked it exactly. The first time I saw it, I liked it. I remember walking out of the theater like, yeah, that was I I liked it, but I had some issues with it. (laughs) But the more times I've watched it, it's now one of my favorite like science fiction movies. Wow. Okay. Um, yeah, you're gonna have to defend that. <laughs> yeah, I'll see if I can. We'll see if maybe I can I can change your mind on it. But um, so was there a reason you hadn't seen it, or is it just one you had missed? So I missed this one initially because there was there was a several year period in my life where I just didn't go see movies. Um, 
so I missed this one in theaters and a lot of people said it was bad. So I never really made an effort to go see it or to, to find it and watch it once it was available uh, at home. And then Alien Covenant came out and I watched that in the <laughs> theaters and I hated it. That'll be another so, episode for sure. <laughs> I, so, I have more positive feelings about Alien Covenant than other people. So yeah, yeah, uh, definitely more than me. But I yeah, watched <laughs> that one was not impressed. So didn't, again, just strengthened my reason of like, I really don't have any reason to seek this one out uh, until now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I have sought it out. And I will say <laughs> I did not hate it. Yeah, so what, just kind of like your overall feeling about it. like I, maybe if you had to put a letter or a number to it, like where are you sitting with it on an initial viewing? Oh, geez. Um, initial viewing, I would say like five to six out of 10. Okay. Like I said, I didn't hate it. Um, there just was, there were a lot of structural issues and a lot of things that kind of felt like Ridley Scott was just throwing a bunch of shit at the wall mm -hmm. to see what would stick. And that always sort of bothers me. Like you, I feel like we don't need, I don't know how far we want to go into this. I assume there's going to be spoilers and everything. Yeah. Like that, so, but... I mean, we'll just assume everybody has, I mean, the movie came out in 2012 as well. So we'll just yeah, assume everybody knows the limitations the is, is past here, but like we've got, I don't know, five, six different monster movies here. <laughs> that are that are all kind of competing for attention and none of them are the alien which i guess is fine because it's a it's a it's a you know prequel and the alien doesn't exist yet and uh oh yeah it turns out david made the alien because why not <laughs> but yeah it's um, uh yeah like we we i feel like and I get that they they sort of explain that by saying that this is the laboratory and they're trying to find a they're, they're trying to find a good way. So there was a bunch of different experiments for for methods of killing people. Uh, but I feel like we didn't need that. I feel like there could have been maybe two as opposed to the Jesus. There was the 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 snake thing. There was yeah. the there were the spores um well the spores were in covenant there there are no spores in this one yeah there uh, are. that's the 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 haverford guy he got some shit in his eye or something it's and uh got okay. infected okay um maybe i missed something okay so let me let me point it out this way okay in a way there are two monsters one is the engineers and the other is okay. the black goo because okay. everything else stems from the black goo um, the snake thing. So I missed this the first time I saw it. The snake things happen from the worms in the in the cave. So when the when the black goo is seeping out of the jar, there's like a shot of mm -hmm. somebody's foot stepping in the dirt, and you see these little like grub like worms or whatever. Uh, and when the black, so this some of this gets revealed in Covenant is what the black goo basically basically does is it's like an evolutionary accelerant. So it mutates okay. things. So when it hits the worms, it mutates them into that like snake thing um and you know because it, it was designed as a weapon so it always mutates things into a more aggressive something version. ravenous and deadly yeah. and aggressive yeah the, th the thing in his eye uh holloway the charlie holloway mm -hmm. character that is because david put it in his glass because he asked him okay. how you know what would you do to find out your answers and he says anything and he <laughs> sticks his finger in the glass and oh, then okay. he drinks it so what, so what that is, that. is it, yeah, what that is, is it's mutating inside of him. And then okay. when they sleep together later, that's why she has the thing inside of her because it transferred mm -hmm. inside of her from them having sex, um, which is a very complicated way to get to that kind of creature. But it's, 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 it's just the way the goo like affects everything it comes in contact with. Right. Um, which is, again, even though we're not talking about Alien Covenant, that is what he does in Alien Covenant is just crossbreeding it with all these different things. It's mm -hmm. interesting that you saw that one first. So that gives you a really interesting <laughs> perspective on this movie. Yeah. And that, that might have that might have shaped things. But I guess going into it, knowing that David was turning into a, a psychotic bastard sort yeah. of colored all of his actions the whole way through. Mm hmm. Um, but it it felt like it felt like he was he, he was like mustache twirlingly shady. 
I say he's right. a lot more evil in this one than in Covenant, even. Mm-hmm. Like having watched them both back to back, he well, he's more of a dick in this one. Oh, yeah, uh, I mean that's fair. <laughs> in, in, if you go into Covenant, you kind of already know that he's bad. If you've seen Prometheus, like mm-hmm. I'm, I'm curious about how Covenant worked with you having not seen Prometheus, uh, with the with the David turn, I guess. Uh, I don't know. Again, it didn't really feel like a turn because he just he, he. You know how in like, you know how in Kabuki theater where they have the the like evil character like the lying deceptive character always yeah. like puts their eyes back and forth so the audience knows up front that they're the one who is like evil and shady and lying yeah it felt like dave like the the david that was that they found was doing that the whole time even in covenant like he was just projecting that i'm that he's a bad guy yeah from and- the start from the moment we meet him i'm like oh he's a bad guy yeah, and you know, coming from Prometheus, you kind of know that already. Like, I mean, the end mm-hmm. lives leaves him a little more ambiguous of like him calling out to Shaw for help and stuff like that. Um, but he, yeah, he does a lot more bad things in Prometheus. Like, because I rewatched both of these over the last week, which is kind of why I wanted to talk about this one. Right. Um, and I definitely felt like, oh, like his his descent in Prometheus is so much harder than in where he is in Covenant. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, yeah, so I mean, there's definitely also... things that you can miss. Like, I, I miss the worm thing, you miss the glass mm-hmm. thing. I I do feel like if you're kind of not zeroed in on it, there's I, I think Prometheus is a movie that benefits from multiple watchings for that reason. Yeah, and it, it probably does demand more of your attention than I was able to give it today while I was watching it in a third monitor at work. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, like even, even with that, even if we say like, okay, so the, the black goo is the monster and it's manifesting in a whole bunch of different ways. It still felt too busy to me. Mm -hmm. Like there, there was, there were too many, like there are too many manifestations of that. And it does the same thing that the alien franchise is famously bad about where we have a creature who can you know, increase its size by tenfold without eating anything, yeah. seemingly. Um, like the, it, at the end where the the thing that got, uh, gray, her name was Gray, right? Uh, Numi, Shaw. Shaw, sorry. Shaw. Who's Gray? Is Gray the one that looks just like her in Covenant? Uh, are you talking about the main character in Covenant? Yeah. She's Daniels. Okay. There might be one nobody. of the other characters. Yeah, maybe. Gray is nobody. I just made that. I mean, up. this movie has a lot of characters. And I don't remember all of their names all the time. <laughs> that um, was another thing. Like they kept just showing us new people. Yeah, there there are quite a few. And like again, when you see it a few times, you kind of know the ones you actually need to pay attention to because right. a lot of them are just in the background. That's fair. But um, it, you know, it's basically Holloway and Shaw, which are the couple, and then mm-hmm. David Vickers, the captain, yep. and uh, Idris, Idris Elba's Elba. character is a character I had never remember his name. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, it's, there's, there's definitely a lot going on. Um, Mm -hmm. one of my, I, I, damn, I had a thought and I just lost it. I hate what Um, happens. Yeah. I was just about to make, what were we just talking about? We were were talking about Shaw and the alien that grows 10 times without Mm. eating anything. Yeah. The one that she pulls out of her, which the one that, the one that she pulls out of her uterus yeah which what did you think of that scene because in the theater that was my favorite moment uh i thought it was i actually thought that was pretty good like the little squid like thing yeah that that she pulled out i thought was fine um i did find it weird that they would that like the table would do a cesarean section without any yeah. anesthesia because it's specific well i think it does give her something um because it, it, like it, it did like a local like topical on the skin yeah anesthesia, that's true. but like she's she's screaming as it's cutting into her and opening everything up and yeah and all that and she had to like she had to do her own oh whatever she just that rips was, like, the cord out and stuff like. well yeah she like ripped the cord out but i mean like she she like stabbed herself with what looked like an oh yeah pen, she does but i'm assuming it was an anesthetic 
Yeah, because I think she's she's hitting herself with those more throughout the movie as well from mm-hmm. that point on. Like when they're walking into the ship, she's like kind of hitting more. I think it's supposed to be like morphine or something. Right. Yeah, that that weirded me out a little bit. But no, that like that scene actually was legitimately really cool. Um, yeah. I, and I a credit where due. <laughs> and, and Covenant is the same. I think the Med Bay scene in Covenant is probably the best scene of that movie as well. Yeah, I, I would agree. Um, I, I think one thing most people agree on with both of those movies is visually they are incredible um yeah like ridley scott can shoot the hell out of a movie um the production design is top notch i really like a lot of the technical aspects of this movie um the music i didn't care about at first but the more times i've watched it it really grew on me i really like the score for both of those movies actually yeah, I didn't um, have a problem with the score. I I thought I didn't it didn't jump out at me, but it wasn't offensive. Yeah, the the first time the first few times I saw it, it did not either. But then when I kind of listened to it on its own, and then there are sure. specific moments like the like it's kind of hauntingly beautiful at times if you're like really focusing on it, and then other times it's it's got this kind of like like the theme of the movie is kind of an upbeat theme, and it, it mm-hmm. does kind of play into some of the like the thematical elements of the movie that I, I like. And at some point we'll touch on here. Um, yeah. But I, I have a pretty unique perspective on this movie because with my last podcast shelved um, the original script for this movie is what gave me the idea for the podcast, which oh, is wow. okay. I read the original script when it was still an alien movie because it was originally right. called alien engineers. And nice. most of the movies pretty much the same, except they're the black goo is not existent. It is, like alien eggs essentially okay um well if i recall because so instead of him getting sick and then like impregnating her he gets infested with something i think he gets infested with some sort of alien because they just Mm -hmm. find him after like he was unconscious in the cave or something and then a, a different type of alien actually the alien from alien covenant like the the white one like the proto morph or whatever that comes out of him in the ship and it can like it's got like no bones or whatever so it can kind of slick through like tight spaces and stuff like that gross it's pretty weird and then <laughs> towards the end of the movie you start seeing more classic aliens so instead of like the black goo that they were going to send to earth it was like eggs mm-hmm. um so that, that was how sense. yeah and honestly i like both versions um so i've also dived into youtube videos there's a three-hour documentary on the blu-ray and like (laughs) when i first walked out of the movie i had a lot of questions um like like what why did they want to kill us and all like some of the questions that shaw has on later anybody think to run sideways yeah that is that is the one moment i will not defend (laughs) and the one thing that everybody has on me uh i'll give i'll give that one up um (laughs) i couldn't not mention it yeah and it's a fair criticism um i have less of a problem with it like like you could argue oh maybe the terrain wasn't so they could run side but i'm pretty sure there's a wide shot and they they had no, plenty it's a, of room it's a super wide shot there was plenty of room yeah. and even eat like shot even like trips and then just rolls sideways yeah, that's true. to get out of the way that's one <laughs> of those things i give up to like hey it's a movie you gotta you gotta put tension in there but it's it's kind of unforgivable um <laughs> But yeah, so I, I've dug into a lot of this movie to the point where I have those questions answered for me now because okay. the movie's been out long enough that Ridley Scott has spoken on a lot of it. Sure. And um, the the thing that grabs me about it, and it's hard to use this as a defense because it is not in the movie, mm-hmm. but like the elements of it are still there is the fact that engineers were basically God. And, you know, the opening scene of the movie, which I think most people forget about by the time the movie ends, is when the engineer seeds life on Earth, when he drinks the goo and he falls into the water and they show DNA. Like, is that what he was doing? That's what he was doing. Okay. And so Ridley Scott flat out says the reason the engineers wanted to kill us is because we killed Jesus. And Jesus was so in one version, he says Jesus was an engineer and another, or so there's this other YouTube video I watched where a guy dived into a bunch of early scripts. And he, had, so the scene where they released the engineer at the end, there was actually mm-hmm. a bunch of dialogue there. And there, there is a right. deleted scene on the Blu ray, but it's not translated. But in the original scripts, it was. And the engineers talk as if they are like biblical, like the way, okay. like a lot of, so like 
a lot of like religion is it's essentially like engine it's ancient aliens is all it is sure. <laughs> the, the engineers were ancient aliens and it was like hey we gave you life we gave you eden which is what they call earth so it's like okay mm-hmm. you know that that makes sense and he's like we just we were so proud of our creation and we just sat back and watched you destroy yourselves and so we took one of you brought him to us to educate him and then brought him back and then you just killed him so we just decided like you just weren't worth you you didn't deserve it type thing and so like i that totally drags me in like i'm, I'm not a religious person but that stuff kind of fascinates me um and i kind of like the way they do it in a way that makes sense in a little mm-hmm. bit but but again none of that's in the movie right i mean that that would have been compelling if yeah. if there was some way of like i don't know if that had been recorded somewhere yeah um and like i said there and are I, elements I say, of it i say if that had been recorded even though like one of the things that i didn't really care for in the movie is how much they relied on you know security footage to piece together what happened yeah like the holograms and stuff yeah which was another thing in the original script so like their technology like so even when they pilot the ship you can see it has all that uh Mm -hmm. like holographic stuff above the controls in the script it's pointed out that david can see that stuff and others can't that when they're walking through the caverns and stuff he can see there's like this light and technology going on but the humans can't that's why he's able to open the door interesting but that never made it into the movie Again, there's all these interesting ideas that <laughs> it's like I if, because I have the burden of knowing all this stuff, I end up kind of liking it more, even though it's not spelled out. Right. Because you're you're uh, inferring. You're at this point, you're almost watching a different movie. Yeah, in a way than the rest or you're projecting what this movie could have been onto what it actually is. Yeah. And I, I will say I do like the movie for what it is. But mm-hmm. it is like over the years, you know, I've probably watched this movie like 10 times. And because it, it used to be a movie I would kind of just throw on and like sure. it would just be on in the background. Um, I and can now, see that. And now weirdly Alien Covenant has like, I don't know what it is about these movies. I just they <laughs> I like that it's a big sci fi movie that kind of wrestles with um, pretty serious themes and it mm-hmm. doesn't really treat the audience like an idiot. Um, and it, you know, it's a yeah. big budget sci-fi movie. Like we don't get a lot of that. And I think, yeah, I just appreciate that. I think like, I think this, it could have benefited from, I mean, because the, the theme of like the nature of God and the nature of man is very prevalent throughout the whole thing. Yeah. Um, even in covenant, I, there's still some in there. Yeah. And I, I think that this is about to turn into an episode of the film rescue, but I think <laughs> it could have benefited more from really playing into uh, Shaw's faith. Yeah, especially and especially because like if 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 we're working under the assumption that like even if we go back to the central premise of the engineers essentially are they're Noah's arcing everything because they've decided that humanity has screwed itself over and they're pissed off because humans killed Jesus, right? Killed their version of yeah. Jesus. Like the fact that it, he, theoretically the engineer should have recognized the cross that she had, like the cross necklace at that point, yeah. because he would have known that that was what that was. So having a like, if he had woken up and even if he hadn't gone through everything, but like if after David had spoken, if he had just like knocked David out of the way and then killed everybody, but stopped at Shaw yeah, because he saw the necklace. And then theoretically, if, if David was still alive, David could have then started translating and we could have had a little bit of exposition to that point. I think it would have made, it would have been a lot more powerful that way. Yeah, because in in the deleted scene that they have, it's it's like a very brief conversation, and um, mm-hmm. something that the, one of the original scripts does is they it does translate the engineer versus the in the movie David is translating the engineer, but in he the original, even. but no, in the in the deleted scene, oh okay, um, in the scene that is, so if this scene had made it into the movie, it, it's on the special features or whatever, but he's actually lying about what the translation is to some point he's translating it, but he's kind of leaving stuff out. Like, right. 
in the movie they he's like, fudging the translation yeah like in the deleted scene there's like it's kind of the, the engineer says a lot and dave is just like he wants to know why we're here but like and if you like on the on the special features on like the blu-ray there's like a documentary and stuff you can see some of this stuff mm-hmm. um they show that like the engineer like says a lot more than what david's letting on because gotcha. as we find out david has a sort of god complex <laughs> yeah a bit of an agenda yeah because yeah it in I'm assuming I don't know if there are different versions of the of this movie or whatever, but in the version I watched, there's just the one. The engineer doesn't say anything. It's just no. David. David starts talking and tries to introduce himself, and the engineer rips his head off and then goes yeah. on a rampage. Yeah, and honestly, I kind of, I kind of, I, I like the way the movie leaves a lot of unanswered questions. Um, it was something that bothered me the first time I watched it, but then as I watch it more and kind of looking at it from a like screenwriting perspective, it's it's like, it's kind of like the, the answers don't matter because the story is about the characters. Um, And it's, it's all just, it's all just kind of like the horror of it. I mean, yeah, I don't know if I would, I don't know if I can accept that it's about the characters. If the care, if there's no growth to any of the characters throughout the whole movie though. And in the yeah, end, everybody is... dies. Because mm-hmm. I'm trying to think, is there growth? Because even Shaw, when she finds out, it's like, hey, his, her boyfriend's like, well, you can take that necklace off because you know who made us. And she's like, yeah, well, who made them? Um, yeah, there, she, you know, there is, I guess, no real change to her character other than she well, wants and... to continue on the mission. Yeah, I mean, at, at this point, like her her motivation goes from finding you know, questioning the nature of existence, trying to find our creators, our God, to wanting to interrogate our God. Yeah, well, I mean, the yeah, because the closest she gets to changing from that is they want to kill us and we can't let this ship get to Earth. So if you have to, you have to kill this ship or whatever. Like she's willing to kill them, even though she knows who they are. Um, But yeah, and that, you know, that was a big problem with Covenant is we were kind of hoping some of that would get answered to that, but then they just killed her off. Yeah. Um, which, yeah. you know, my biggest problem with Covenant is the fact that it is an alien movie because my favorite thing about this movie is that it's not an alien movie. <laughs> and to me, the strongest parts of Covenant is when it's a sequel to Prometheus and not a prequel to Alien. Yeah, I I think honestly this this film is harmed by its connection to the alien franchise. Yeah. And which is weird because that's kind of my favorite part about it. Like, I like that it takes place in the world. I wish it didn't have to then tie into it. Yeah. I don't know. I guess it, it, it said, because it seems to me like if you're going to set it here, you're dealing with the engineers, which have already been talked about in the, you know, in previous movies you're you're dealing with that and you have a shape-shifting body parasitic alien creature it's like they set themselves up as like we want to we are they it feels like they had tried to have their cake and eat it too like oh, be able oh, to say like so. we we want to remind you that this is part of the alien franchise but we also don't want to deal with like we don't want to have to deal with any you know silly things like continuity or thematic you know relevance to the alien franchise yeah and a big question is so you know the ship crashing on there a lot of people would assume like oh well then this must be the planet from alien but obviously the atmosphere is very different but i think I, I there's I can't remember how many years there's a a significant year gap between this and when Alien takes place, so mm-hmm. technically the planet could be classified under a different name because they do say the name of the planet or whatever. Um, but I remember when the movie was announced, they're like, "Hey, we're making an Alien prequel," but then when they were making it, they're like, "Oh, it's not really a prequel; it's kind of its own thing." Mm-hmm. And to me. I wonder how much of what feels like alien in this movie was pressure from the studio. Um, and I think a lot of that, or a lot of pressure from the studio explains covenant of like, no, you got to get aliens in there. Like I, f- yeah, I think he's been pretty open that he didn't want to put aliens in covenant and he wanted to save it for the third one. 
right which i would have preferred um but for what for what it was i'm like this is okay. this is fine i guess for that second one but like to me the strongest elements of this are when i'm not thinking about alien where it's kind of just its own sci-fi movie dealing with these sure. heavy issues that i think it deals with in a pretty interesting way and like it's it's a movie that i have never seen before which is kind of what i'm looking for yeah i'm 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 making a face at that <laughs> Uh, and I, again, it just it just goes back to like you say you say that it takes these themes and deals with them in an interesting way. And I would counter with does it, though? It's a fair counter. <laughs> um, <laughs> I guess to me, what's interesting and again, is it's a problem with the movie is a lot of the stuff I find interesting isn't in the movie. It's right. in a lot it's of the <laughs> extra stuff. <laughs> But yeah, um, the, the the movie's a lot better if you've read the supplemental yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. novelization and the the prequel comic. And... Oh, there actually <laughs> is a sequel comic to this that is pretty incredible. Is it? Uh, yeah. Um, it's you can't I don't even think you can. Well, you can find the individual physical copies, but they did a series called Fire and Stone. But okay. it's it's Prometheus, Alien, and Alien versus Predator. So it's like Prometheus, Fire and Stone, Alien, Fire and Stone, Predator, Fire and Stone, and then Alien versus Predator, Fire and Stone. And it's about like a team that f- lands on this planet like years later and like mm. what has kind of happened. And it's it's a pretty like the hard copy edition, which you can't even get anymore. It's like a book like 13, 14 inches tall. And it's like a it's, thick hardcover. It's two hundred dollars on ebay exactly it used to be like 40 bucks but i think it's out of print but you can still get the individual books of prometheus alien alien versus predator or whatever i had it i so i have it digitally on my ipad so i have the full book and then there's a sequel to that also called life and death and it's the same concept but it's like one big story and it's actually a really good follow-up to this movie um okay more so than covenant but it you know it it is it's not dealing with the kind of stuff that this movie is it is more of like hey this is like an aliens movie and a predator movie just in mm-hmm. this same universe or whatever uh i do highly recommend that though good to know if but um 200 bucks to spare yeah or or if you if you do digital the digital version's <laughs> great um but no i i like i like that this is ancient aliens the movie um which is like a thing i never thought i would say but um no i i i am it's a movie i love to watch i will admit because of the visuals i think all Mm -hmm. the performances are really great um i like a lot of the characters and i i like um holloway how he kind of become he's like the shitty one like hey you made this great discovery (laughs) and you can't be happy about it just because you didn't get everything you wanted which in maybe is a metaphor for the movie because you don't maybe. get everything you want. <laughs> and unfortunately that's how life is sometimes. I, I will say like talking about having it on and, and stuff like that, having, having now seen it, it's not something like, it's not something that I would seek out and just put on, but it's totally inoffensive to the point yeah. of like, if I went over to your house and you're watching Prometheus, I'll sit down and watch it with you. Yeah. Right. Like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be like, oh, Prometheus, get that shit out of my <laughs> timeline. It's not pixels. Oh god, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> and I would say the same thing about Covenant. Like when I first saw that, I was like, ooh, I don't know if I like this, but I was like, oh, well, you know, <laughs> I'll give it another shot. And I've again, the more I watch it, the more I find to appreciate about it. And um, I do think there's a way more to appreciate appreciate about Prometheus. Um, Covenant is carried by Michael Fassbender. I would agree. Yeah. Um, which he, he is maybe... the best part of both movies. <laughs> I mean, that dude's a national treasure. Um, he's he's he is really good at being a creep. Yeah. And I, I love him as David. Like, <laughs> I, I honestly hope and I I know there was rumblings that he might get to. He was going to do another movie, uh, Ridley Scott, and I honestly hope he kind of gets to finish it um, mm-hmm. just because like uh, Covenant is such kind of a hanging ending because that movie ends on a cliffhanger, which I guess is something Ridley Scott wanted to do since the original Alien and kept getting told no. And that was the one time he was allowed to do it. <laughs> and now with the whole Disney thing, you know, who knows that that's probably never going to happen. 
Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Um, I, I, I hope it. I would like to see this get at least a proper ending. Like, just give them one more, make it a trilogy, and be done with it. Um, you know, Covenant didn't not make money, but it didn't make a lot. <laughs> I think it was in the ballpark yeah. of like 600 million on like a 200 million budget. So who knows if That's they made profit. Bad. Yeah. Um, but they, they might have, but in reviews, I think we're like middle of the road. Um, yeah, that one, that one was less. That one was less fine than this yeah, one. Like yeah. th- th- this, I would, th- this, I would not argue. Like I would even go so far as to say this was fine. Yeah, I, I still don't think this was. I, I would not say that it was good, but I'm not gonna <laughs> like. I, I'm not gonna fault you for thinking it was good if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, we're and, all we're all here to be positive. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but I, I I will easily happily say that it was fine, and I'm not sure that I would do that for Covenant, which I haven't seen since I saw it in the theater. So yeah. <laughs> and yeah i mean so that was that was actually a case where i watched that one on a bootleg that like a friend had just because i wasn't able to get to the theater and he's like hey i have this movie do you want to watch it? i was like sure so uh, whenever i do that i usually make a point to sure. either buy the blu-ray or watch it in hd in some form just because like well yeah. i like i need to give this an actual chance mm-hmm. uh, i did the same thing with venom so <laughs> um, i still haven't seen that it's uh... for for mostly the same reason like, uh I missed it in theaters and just haven't cared enough to seek it out. If if that movie came out in 2004, we would have loved it. Um, <laughs> I just, I think it's kind of okay. Um, I'm probably going to have to track it down because the sequel looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. I am. I'm super interested in that. Actually, the trailer looks fun. And mm-hmm. hey, the best parts of that first one, I will say I love Tom Hardy in that movie. Some people kind of shit on his like, accent i guess not accent but like his his choice affectation of, yes like i thought he was fun i like the interaction with him and the symbiote i think that alone is kind of worth it if you can you know maybe not in the theater but like if you're gonna if you have a way to watch it it's, i think it's worth at least checking out and that's what a lot of people i've talked to have said that that the first movie should have been was um you know felix and oscar but with uh or, or not Felix and Oscar. What am I thinking of the the? Oh Jesus! What was that old show with Jack Lemon? Whatever, it doesn't matter. Cut this out. <laughs> um, Odd Couple. That's what it was. Mm. That it was. That it yeah, was yeah. essentially the you know that it should have just been the Odd Couple with uh, with Eddie Brock and and yeah. the symbiote. Yeah, and those are the best parts of the movie. And there's a little <laughs> bit of that in the trailer for the second one. If you saw the right. trailer. Um, no, that that and it that movie's quick. You're in and out. It it feels mm-hmm. like to, you barely even sat there. Um, you know, Prometheus a little longer. <laughs> um, these are these are movies that the production goes a long way for me. It's it's great to look at. It's great to just like kind of let it wash over you. Like I said, I I really enjoy the music. I enjoy the music more so in Covenant. That's actually my writing sure. playlist. Um, I really like that music for that composer i think it's jed kurzel or kruzel or something um i've watched two movies that he did the score for and the movies are both kind of so-so but i love the scores <laughs> um nice. i can't remember who did the score for prometheus it might have been the same guy who did the music for like the metal gear solid games Interesting. Um, but i well, i see we have we have yeah I'm all to... human knowledge at our fingertips yeah i'm trying to pull that up uh, oh, is. Mark Streinfeld. That's... He did a, he did American Gangster and Body of Lies, The Gray, that the Wolf movie with Liam Neeson. Okay, and then the Poltergeist remake. <laughs> he he hasn't done a lot, and I've only seen a few of these. But um, like I said, the the music it kind of I kind of didn't like you said I did, it didn't really stand out to me the first few times but it was yeah one of those things the more I watched it I was like oh I actually really like what's going on here especially during the ending stuff when like more of the horror is actually taking place I think some of that stuff is really good mm-hmm. um, and yeah that it's, it's actually want to like kind of because it was actually the last time I watched it that I was like oh I'm like really digging this so I might oh, I might just did, uh, raised by wolves too oh okay Oh yeah, the the HBO the, show, right? The, the Ridley Scott HBO show. Yeah. yeah, I only I I 
only watched the first three episodes. I never went back to it, but I really enjoyed what I saw. I haven't watched any of it. I oh. should probably do that. I, I enjoyed the first three because that was one of those ones they dropped three and then they came out weekly after that. So mm-hmm. I, I saw the first three and then just kind of was busy and didn't go back to it. But yeah, I mean, there's just something about the Ridley Scott projects. I, I just love looking at them because Raised by Wolves was another one. It's just it was really nice to look at, but right. very dour. <laughs> um, so that was why I didn't rush back to it, but I, I enjoyed everything that was kind of going on. But um, and, you know, Prometheus shares that a little bit like there's not a lot of positivity going on in this movie. <laughs> That's um, fair. It, it does end with pretty much everybody dead except for Shaw. Uh, and then she's just stranded on this planet until like well, the last 10 seconds. Yeah. Um, which, yeah, the ending was pretty different in the original script was she was stranded and they were implying that a bunch of other uh, engineers were going to be showing up. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing I do think is interesting about this movie is how so they prepared to kill us about 2000 years ago when we killed Jesus. So all this technology is technically 2000 years old from Mm -hmm. what wherever the engineers currently are. And then an alien covenant, that ship just shows up on the planet and everything. Nobody seems weird about it at all. It's just like, Oh yeah, that's just one of ours. Like, Mm -hmm. are you going to suggest to me that technology doesn't really advance in 2000 years for an advanced species? Yeah, exactly. That, that would be like, you know, a, yeah, I don't know. I guess you could say that would be like a Model T rolling into, you know, your local chamber of commerce and nobody yeah. batting an eye at it or even being like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like that stuff just really grabs me about the movie. Like <laughs> the, w- the way it kind of ties into our religion. And I do almost wish they kept that deleted scene in there. But I, I do like that he kind of just... He's just like, no, and he just attacks them. And the one moment that kind of, for me in the movie, that makes me feel like he has a reason to is because Shaw tries to talk to him and that dude just like elbows her with the gun. And maybe he just, you know, sees how horrible and aggressive we are. And he's just like, no, like, screw these people. Yeah, I suppose. Uh, I still think like, again, it, it if you're going to speak on the nature of God, you need to do something with that. And the fact that they didn't, that they had like, they they had Shaw there as like perfectly set up to be, to be able to essentially comment on or, or give voice to the theme of the film and didn't kind of bothers me. Yeah. I mean, they only bring up her religion in like two scenes I can think of. It's yeah. when she's dreaming in the beginning. And mm-hmm. then when Holloway brings it up after they discover the engineers or like that right. they are from them. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't, like there, did you, did you dive into like the alien lore about the space jockey, like back in the day, like with that movie and stuff? No, I did read, I, I read the novelization. Yeah. And again, that would have been like 20 years ago. Um, but uh, I haven't done any any digging other than that. Yeah, I, I was always one of these these like nerdy kids. that's like, oh, I'm going to read everything I can about everything when I had access sure. to the Internet. And I, I saw aliens more than I saw alien. So when I did mm-hmm. finally go back and like rewatch alien, um, I was like, oh, I forgot about this like big alien creature with like it's chest bursted in that scene and stuff. <laughs> And I was like, that's fascinating. Why isn't that talked about more? And then finding out that it was just on the internet or whatever. Yeah. Like for me, it was just kind of the satisfaction of like seeing what that was in this movie. Granted, it changed over the years. Like there's, I'm, I don't know how the novelization deals with it, but there's like comic books and stuff that kind of like, oh no, these were like weird aliens with trunks and stuff. And I kind of like, that's what I was kind of expecting in this movie because I didn't know anything going in other than like, mm-hmm. hey, it's supposedly an alien prequel. Um, and seeing like, oh, no, that was just like a helmet. or That whatever. was a helmet. Yeah. Yeah. And like, yeah, the scene with the head. Like, I, I really like that scene. Like, th- I think this movie deals with mystery pretty well for the most part up until the point where they're like, hey, you're not going to get any answers. 
but it definitely <laughs> kept dragging me along I'm like well i want to i want to see what happens next i want to know why is this happening what's up with, what was up with that worm thing and stuff and like yeah having to watch it multiple times to find out or like read about <laughs> it like i didn't pick up on the worms thing for a long time i was always just like mm-hmm. where did that thing come from because yeah. i always i always miss it. it's kind of a throwaway shot mm-hmm. it probably says more about me than it does about the movie itself but i have I kept getting taken out of the movie by just the characters doing stupid things <laughs> with respect to like this particularly is another with, big moment or another big that? complaint about this movie is the characters. Yeah. And I mean, I'm I'm not gonna complain about the characters themselves, other than like well, I the said, the fact that there the aren't characters. there aren't really any any arcs, but like I I would be watching this and it was really hard for me to be engaged when i was th- when i kept being like okay yeah sure there's air here but you're on an alien yes. planet why the hell are you taking your helmet off and yeah. you're dissecting this alien artifact here that has what looked to be you know f- a spores or something growing out of it why is it not already in quarantine and well, they had the head like in that. like and the little quarantine box no, or whatever they didn't though they were right out in like open touching it well, they uh, they put I, I might it have... into quarantine when it started to fizzle and okay, yeah, everything. you're right because it is just sitting on the table and it slides it's just back on the in, table. Right? Yeah, yeah. I is there a throwaway dialogue line where they scan it beforehand or whatever? There, there might have been that I missed. Um, yeah, because there is a th- <laughs> there is a moment in when before they take off their helmets, which to, to be fair, everybody protests before that guy does. Like, no, don't sure. do that. But they do say the air is cleaner than Earth, but that doesn't mean you don't know what else, like any microbes or anything that could be in the air. Yeah. Um, another big one is the guys who get lost and, you know, the guy like, oh, he's smoking weed in his thing. Like, yo, these guys are scientists. Are you really going <laughs> to expect them to be acting like this? My defense for that. That is, I don't mind. This honestly. is like a ragtag <laughs> group that they threw together. And that even that dude's like, I'm here for money, man. Like, mm-hmm. this is the people they could get. You're probably not getting the best of the best. Um, that being said, the, the dude trying to pet the snake thing also kind of does. Yeah, that was that 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 too exactly. Like watching yeah. it, he's like, "Oh, it's so beautiful," and he goes yeah. to grab. Like, what are you do? What are you? No, why are you? What are you? Yeah. Oh, like I get it. He's the biologist. Like he's gonna be a little more interested. But that thing was clearly not nice when you're reaching towards it and it's like flaring like a cobra. Well, and. And you just said it. he's the biologist. He should know better. Yeah. Like <laughs> you can, I guess you could make an argument that like, oh, well, you don't know what kind of alien it is because it's an alien and you've never seen it. I'm like, it looked threatening to me. Right. I would exactly. say you don't, you, you don't know what kind of, kind of an alien it is, but you know what a snake looks like. Yeah. And what it means when a snake starts doing this, you know what angry posturing is. Yeah. That's pretty um, universal. And it's always cracked me up. I don't know if you've ever seen the first Alien versus Predator movie, but that actor looks exactly mm-hmm. like an actor in that movie. And it's always like, oh, what if they were the same guy? I don't think they that are. That would be hilarious. I'm pretty sure everybody died in that one. In Alien versus Predator? Yeah. Uh, every, everybody Everyone except, except uh, the for main the girl. Woman. Yeah. yeah. Which that's a movie I could also talk about. Uh, I don't love it, but I think I like it more than most. Yeah, that's another one that I, I again don't hate. Um, yeah, my biggest complaint is it's not rated about R. Requiem. Oh, that is awful. That is a god awful movie. It has like a couple <laughs> things I would say about it. Like at least it's violent, and like at, at least it's like a some cool predator fighting alien action. But you can't see half of it because that movie has no lighting whatsoever. Yeah, um, yeah, not 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 a fan of that one. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, like the helmet thing is actually because that comes up in Covenant as well, but mm-hmm. I think that is it actually really bugged me in that too. I I have a better defense for that one though. I mean, not that it's the smartest decision, but I can understand it from a scared human level. Of mm-hmm. they just watched their captain die. There's a lot of dialogue about how like no one is anxious to get back in those pods after what happened, and that they're all tired of being cooped up on the ship. They scan the planet and they say that like, oh, this seems better than the planet we were going to. So like, I can understand why nobody would just want to wear their helmets. Um, that being said, them not wearing their helmets directly leads to everything that happens in that movie. Yep. 
but uh at least i can understand and the, those people aren't scientists they're colonists that's true um, so there's at least a better defense there but i mean people complain about it in prometheus but them taking off their helmets doesn't actually lead to any problems no like it's it's the it's all the black goo and messing with that stuff that kind of starts the downward spiral yeah and like i said i missed the um I I missed David putting the black goo in uh yeah what's his name Holloway Holloway's drink so the only thing I could think of was that it must have like fallen from the ceiling yeah. in the cavern that they were in when he was walking around without his fucking helmet sorry <laughs> no. can you swear yeah 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 okay. um <laughs> no cuz David takes the can so when they open the chamber and like it affects the mm -hmm. air in there the the black goo starts leaking out of the canisters cuz the atmosphere has changed David takes one of the canisters and they I there's a scene know, I did see that and yes. I saw him like take it out and look at yeah. it so um, what he what he does is he puts like the drop on his hand and there's that line he's holding it up and he's like oh big things have small beginnings or whatever mm -hmm. um it's it's implied that it's still on his finger when he goes to Holloway Gotcha. And then he he literally asked him for permission is the way that's kind of viewed to me. Cause he's like, what right. would you do? And then he says he would do anything. And then he's like, well, mm -hmm. I'll drink to that. And he hands him the drink and there's a clear shot of him dipping his finger in the drink. Gotcha. And so that's how that happens. Yep. I saw all that, but I, I missed the part where he was dipping his finger where, where he dipped his finger in the drink. Yeah. And it, yeah, it's, you know, again, you say, you know, you're watching it at work. <laughs> um, it, it's best it's, I can do. Yeah. <laughs> But hey, I saw this in the theater and I missed some of this stuff. So mm -hmm. like the worm scene, like, um, you know, and I think some of this was brought up. I don't know if you watch any of the red letter media stuff, but they have a, a video where they kind of attack this movie, I guess is one way to say it, where it's just one character sitting there asking the other guy questions of like, mm -hmm. why did they do this? Why was it like this? What about this? And the other guy just doesn't <laughs> answer. He just sits there and stares dumbfounded <laughs> and like. I don't know. I I think it'd be fun to kind of go back through that video now, having seen it a bunch of times, because, you know, a lot of reviewers and stuff, they'll watch a movie once and then they put sure. out this stuff. Um, yeah. I'd it'd be interested to go through and see if I have an answer for a lot of that stuff now. But, um, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to sit here and say it's a perfect movie. I'm just going to say sure. there's a lot of things I will forgive about it. And and I will I will even go so far as to say that uh, after this conversation, I am probably more willing to revisit it than i would have been otherwise yeah to like to give it a fair shake because yeah. i will i will acknowledge <laughs> that watching it while i'm working on a you know peripheral monitor probably isn't the best <laughs> uh best environment yeah um yeah and you know like i said it was one that grew on me like i mm -hmm. i liked it when it came out and you know it sounds like my initial viewing i liked it more than your initial viewing like even slime mold yeah um but <laughs> like come up with something gross every time you say it grew on me <laughs> um because it, it's a movie so like often when i'm doing other things like if i'm playing games or working on something mm -hmm. or whatever i'll often just set up my ipad and go in like my itunes library and just hey sure. you know just pick a random movie and this for a while was one i would just click on and so i think just over time just kind of watching i was like oh man I just you know i really like that or like this is <laughs> you know this is kind of nice um there is I don't know what it is. It's it is eye candy and like the sound effect, like listening to this or watching this movie in headphones and everything. Like just the way it's edited and mixed, something about it is just pleasant to me to like absorb. Um, I love how clean it looks. I love how nice it looks. I love how great it sounds. Like like I said, from a production level, I think it's maybe some of the best work in Hollywood. You know, I think most of the problems of this movie come down to the script. That is definitely a fair assessment. I, I would agree on pretty much all counts. The script and maybe some of the performances. <laughs> okay, so uh, what performances did you not care for? Because I actually like a lot of the performances. <laughs> I think, um, I do think that the the geologist guy felt like he was trying a bit too hard. Um, yeah. I felt like the i felt like uh vickers uh Charlize i would agree Theron, with that charlie thron was a bit wooden and uh yeah like she's a military 
stiff or whatever. Yeah. Um, but she, she really f- didn't. I don't feel like she justified her existence. I will she say, was, as the the Academy Award winner on the cast, she is kind of the weakest one. Like I think she's fine, yeah. but um, yeah, her character is a little one note of just like I'm the person who doesn't want to be here. But yeah. honestly, maybe the only person who has an arc in the movie of uh, she's like, I don't want to be here. I don't believe in any of this. But by the end, she obviously believes because she's seen it with her own eyes. Um, and yeah, but might- she's still like, it, like she's not like if you look at, say, Idris Elba, by contrast, he's very obviously the whole time he's there for a paycheck. He's not interested in what's going on. He's yeah. sort of acting selfish in a like charming lovable idris elba sort of way uh but by the end of the movie he 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 at least is willing to make that sacrifice so he has he has grown a little so i guess my hero (laughs) i guess my statement before about how nobody how there's no growth or no character arcs is a little incorrect because he grows a bit and his his two his two buddies benedict wong and whoever else yeah you know they're willing to go you know go there with him but they got like eight minutes of screen time all together yeah. so they, they got like some that. fun little banter and that's kind of all they get right but by if you if you can contrast Idris Elba's character with Charlize Theron's character yes she acknowledges that the thing that she has now seen with her own eyes is real but yeah. she's still like it, even to the change. very end to even to the very end she's not willing to contribute in any way like when Idris Elba is making this big sacri- like sacrifice. She's running for the escape pod. Yeah. And I mean, she's trying to talk him out of it even. She's like, no, just mm-hmm. get us out of here. He's like, yeah, but if yeah. I do that, there's no point. They're just going to go kill everybody. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I mean, yeah, she doesn't change at all, which I guess I can say I'm kind of okay in a, in a movie like this because. Well, and like every character doesn't need to change. I, no. I would say that like over the course of, you know, in the in the first Captain America movie, Steve Rogers doesn't change, but he's he's a compelling character who is played convincingly and effectively. Yeah. You know, by Chris Evans. That is also and, a weird case because so I actually just watch. I don't know if you're familiar with the YouTube channel Lessons from the Screenplay. Oh, yeah. Um, he recently Great posted stuff. a video looking at the characters of uh, Captain America and Iron Man throughout mm-hmm. the entire MCU. Okay. And it's like, so, you know, Iron Man has, a, or Tony Stark has a character arc in the first Iron Man movie, but you, you have a point about Steve Rogers, but it's weird because the way those, that series is structured is like, there's an arc throughout all of the movies, not just mm-hmm. like the single movie. Because you look at right. Captain America Civil War and he's a different character than he is in Captain America the First Avenger. Oh, absolutely. Like, um, I, I really enjoy how those two characters kind of their entire ideologies like start on opposite ends of the spectrum yeah. and then through the course they kind of meet in the middle and then continue to go through and and are at, end the movies on almost opposite ends yeah, of the spectrum and that's, until Endgame. And that's like the same point he makes in that video too. Right. And honestly, almost made me cry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's really well done. But um, yeah, uh, I, I guess I... Oh, go even ahead. in that first Captain America movie, like when we didn't even, like we didn't know about his 10 year arc, even in yeah. that first one, he's still a compelling character, even though he does not change because yes. he changes the people around him. Yeah. And it's, and again, it's, it's a compelling performance by Chris Evans and, and, and I really love Charlize Theron in other things, but she, yeah. the, like, and she here was, she's just kind of there. I was bored every time she was on screen, which yeah. is not something that I would ever want to say about this. Like, I've never said that about Shirley Thrawn before, ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And even her more, most compelling scenes are like when she's with other people and the other people are compelling. Like it, her scene right, with they're, Idris they're Elba when they're just kind of chatting. Of her. Yeah. Um, like I love every action interaction she has with Idris Elba in the movie. Like in the beginning, he's putting up the mm-hmm. little tree, and she's like, "What are you doing?" He's just like, "It's Christmas." He's like, "It's Christmas." <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then just their little chat. He's like, "You know, like, are you a robot?" <laughs> like the way he's right. just talking to her and stuff. Uh, it, I always forget how much fun like he kind of has in this movie with what little time he does. For sure. 
Um, but like, I do love the idea that Shaw is kind of the voice of reason of the movie by, by the mm-hmm. end of it. Like, you know, in the beginning, she's like everybody else, you know, big eyes, open hearts, hoping they can find some cool stuff. But by the end of the movie, she's like, this is, we got to get out of here. Like, this is not what we thought it was. And nobody is listening to her. Like she is yeah. probably the smartest person in the ship and nobody cares. At first it's all oohs and ahs and then the running and the screaming. Exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So, I mean, hey, maybe that's an argument for her arc is in the beginning, she say, hey, we're going on this great scientific thing. We're going to meet our makers and at the end. I'm like, no, this is all horrible. Turn around, go back. But that's yeah, a, that's that's a, a sad, hard That's an unsatisfying make. arc. <laughs> yeah. And I do wonder how much lifting they were expecting a sequel to do and how mm-hmm. much that changed. Because I do feel like the sequel was a lot of Fox stepping in and be like, no, aliens. And they're like, all right, well, we got to put the aliens in. Um, so I, I do wonder if that was lost and I was always confused about the idea to kill her character because she did film stuff for the movie. There is a yeah. prologue on the Blu-ray that features her. Hmm. Um, and I think she did do some, like the recording they find in the movie, I think is her voice and stuff. So maybe they only had her for a limited amount of time, but maybe I was always curious, like how, why that was just dropped the way it was. And if it was because Fox forced them to like take a different path um so i guess you know i guess we've been kind of going for a little while here so i I do want to ask like what is what were the biggest positives you took out of the movie uh the biggest positives are stuff that we've already mentioned like you said it it is a very good looking movie it is a very good sounding movie and some of the creature designs are really interesting and really cool i i actually really liked the uh, like the the cuttlefish like thing that uh, they actually that, that, it is called a trilobite. I know way too much about this stuff. Okay, that <laughs> uh, you know that that Shaw was pregnant with. Um, yeah, circumstances of the pregnancy notwithstanding, um, I do and and like I said, I I I like Michael Fassbender. I think mm. that he is exceptionally good at being weird and creepy and dark and that is on full display here Um, he manages to do a wooden performance of a robot with more emotion than like half the cast then Charlie's Theron did for sure oh yeah a thousand percent (laughs) like I I just I love the way he carries himself as David Mm -hmm. and even as Walter the other android in Covenant too like he I mean playing dual roles in that movie and he's still just nailing it yeah, and and like I said, I, I I think the creatures the creature effects were really cool. I think some of the deaths were appropriately gruesome. Yeah, um, yeah. It just I, I guess at the end of the at the end of the the when the chips all fall, that isn't quite enough for me. Yeah, like I, the as you said, the script is a bit is is lacking, and the performances a bit were. <laughs> uh, I keep saying a bit. The performances were lacking. Yeah to what I want in this kind of movie. I guess I I expected, well, I didn't expect because I've heard from a lot of people that it was bad, but I would normally expect more from a, from a film than just good special effects and cool deaths. Yeah. Which it it does have those in spades. It has Um, those in spades. But I mean, it's so does Covenant and, you know, that's a worse movie by the end. And I would say, I would argue Covenant has even better deaths for the most part. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I mean, that, that's not going to carry your movie. Um, I don't know why I can look past a lot of stuff. I really, I understand the flaws of this movie, but there's mm-hmm. just something about it that pulls me in. You know, I'm a, I'm a big sci-fi fan. Like it's, it's, if I look at my shelf here of my movies and stuff, it is a lot of sci-fi. <laughs> And nice. the the Alien franchise in particular, like Aliens sure. is in my top five movies. So anything that kind of touches that, mm. um, I'm obviously going to like a little more. <laughs> um, there are things, obviously, that are hard to defend. But, uh, it's just one of those things where I, I chalk it up to, eh, like, it, it doesn't it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt the movie for me. And I can't explain why. It's just I, it's a movie I like. Yeah. And it's it's again, it's I I went into it kind of expecting to hate it and i didn't hate it yeah which is a compliment in and of itself right and and i and i'm it's a movie that has a reputation and for me like 
I always see it as a positive when somebody goes into a movie like, oh, I've heard all this negative stuff. And like, hey, you know what? It wasn't that bad. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't that bad. And that that is that is very. That is a good description of how I felt leave like after it was over. I was like, yeah, that wasn't as bad as everybody said it was. Yeah. And, you know, like I said, I, I ran into this movie in a ton of different ways that were not actually watching the movie. Um, <laughs> right. So I have all this stuff in my brain that just like, oh, yeah, that is interesting, even if it doesn't actually matter to what's on the screen, you know? Exactly. Um, yeah, um, I, I, I guess that's kind of it. Yeah, yeah, I can't cool. think of any other point I want to make. Uh, Thanks for making making me watch this dumb movie. <laughs> no problem. I will. <laughs> that's that's my favorite part about this podcast is um, I am the next two episodes I have set to record are both movies I've never seen. Oh, nice. Um, so that's kind of the fun of it is I'm going to experience new things and my guests are going to experience new things and sure. Uh, you get to be the first one. So I love it. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what release order this is going to go in, but let it be known. <laughs> this was the first recorded. Let it be known. Um, but yeah, uh, <laughs> you know, you have your own podcast. Would you like to give that a plug or anything else? Sure. Yeah, um, I am. I, I record and produce a podcast called Recorded Tomorrow. It's a it's all about time travel and how to use it effectively when telling stories when you know when writing fiction my co-host Jonathan and I uh, break down what we think of as the fundamental rules of time travel and pitfalls to avoid and how to be consistent and how to do things better we uh, recently have started taking um, like analyzing and taking examples of like taking movies and, and books and things like that and breaking them down and seeing how well they follow these rules and how, like, if they affect things. Um, this show's kind of on hiatus for the moment. We're still putting together how we're going to move forward. Our most recent episode that probably by the time this airs will still be the Bill and Ted Face the Music episode, which was fantastic. We actually I managed love that to... Movie. It's so good. Um, we actually got... Uh, Spiros Mihalakis, who is a quantum physicist and oh, the wow. science consultant for the movie. Wow. To talk to us and sit down with us. How did you uh, pull that off? <laughs> I literally just asked him on Twitter if he would come on. I've gotten so many of my guests that way. <laughs> and it's uh, nice when it works. Yeah, no, it's great. Um, but that's that's the most recent one. Uh, I've also been I'm a pretty frequent guest on the School of Movies podcast which is a film analysis uh show by uh, my friends alex and sharon shaw who just like break down do re like really deep uh, analysis of films in general most recently the one that i was on uh is on a, a richard curtis movie about time which is big surprise another time travel one <laughs> um and uh yeah i actually recently he is also an author and i consulted for him on a time travel novel that he just wrote called back in time and space oh nice i actually have a i have a friend as well that is writing a time travel novel right now nice uh oh and yes you can find our podcast wherever you find podcasts in general it's called recorded tomorrow or you can reach out to us on twitter at time travel pod all right i this actually reminds me i had a <laughs> i was having a conversation with an old coworker. Uh, we were just working one day talking about time travel. I can't even remember what prompted it, but I was talking about, you know, the, some movies kind of approach time travel differently. And mm -hmm. I think we were originally talking about the Star Trek 2009 uh, okay. yep. version. And then I was discussing the, the idea of like, oh, well, if time travel existed, we would kind of know because somebody would have done it already. Like if the version of time travel, like, hey, if I time traveled back to right here, right now, I would appear right here, right now from the mm. future. And he just didn't get it. He just could not wrap his mind around that concept. But he's like, but no, but but it hasn't been invented yet. I'm like, yeah, but in the future, it will be. And if we time travel, <laughs> we would show up. He's like, yeah, but but it's not real yet. And I'm just like, OK, just never mind. And it was like an out. It was like an hour long conversation. I'm just trying to explain to him, but like, yes, but the future would happen and then it would happen. He just didn't get it. Has he seen uh, the prisoner of Azkaban? 
he was actually a huge Harry Potter fan. So, I mean, that's that's how time travel works in in that yeah. universe is the same way. Oh, I wish uh, and I had thought also, of that at the time. It's the same as Bill and Ted, too, does the same thing. Yeah. Uh, the, like, the way I like to explain that one is if you, like, if you take, if you figure, if you if you think of the timeline as, like, your experience of the timeline as a ribbon. Yeah. And traveling back in time in that way is like taking the ribbon and folding it around itself yeah a little bit and then so you have there there's like these a little two, knot. well not even a knot just like wrap it around like so let's say like wrap it around a pole or something yeah, yeah um there's a there's a small section of that timeline if you just look at it after that's happened from left to right there's a section of that timeline where both ribbons are there yeah and from you know, it's it's just a matter of shifting perspectives. So the first time you see it, you're going through on the bottom ribbon. And then the second time you go through that timeline, you're oh, at the okay. top ribbon. But it's the same con like it's the same stretch of time in both yeah. cases. Yeah. Yeah. See, I just needed you there to help him explain it to me. <laughs> <laughs> you really want to like destroy his brain, have him watch predestination. I have heard of that. I have not seen that. It also, is, what is the one about the guys in the garage or whatever? Primer? 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 Yeah, yeah, I've never seen that one either. It, it, it. <laughs> I'm I, I'm probably blasphemous for saying it, but I'm not a big fan of Primer. Oh, okay. I, I know nothing about it. It's one of those ones I've tried to know as little about because I know I'm going to see it one day. So I just know it's time loops and stuff like that. Yeah, or... and like people like people really like that one because the because the science is really good yeah and like the science is really good and makes a lot of sense and everything my problem with that is again much like with <laughs> prometheus i expect more yeah and the like primer feels like the creators spent so much time getting their mechanics right that they forgot they were making a movie yeah and like that a, they were telling a, a story a well, no, like just it would have made it it would have made a better instruction manual. Oh, OK, like it, 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 they're there. It's a it's a, a pair of characters that you don't sympathize with ever. Yeah. And the 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 plot is such that it is, you know, this it, it is there to facilitate the time travel. Um, like I said, it, it feels like they spent so much time on that that they forgot to tell a story along the way where it really should be the other way around where you know time travel is a tool that you use to tell better stories as opposed yeah. to the story being a tool that you can use to describe your time travel mechanics which is how primer feels uh predestination is the one you're talking about right yeah with okay. ethan hawk and yeah, okay. uh, sarah snook i think i remember this coming out i looked it up because i want to look that up but... it is the mind fuckiest movie like the <laughs> biggest mind fuck you will ever see okay i'm gonna check that one out um but all right man uh thank you for coming on and doing this and, yeah you thanks know, for having me this is fun watching that movie uh, maybe <laughs> we'll get you on as a guest you can pick your own movie next time sure uh but yeah um be sure to check out his podcast i actually subscribe to it right before the show so thank i'm gonna you. check that out as well um and yeah uh not really sure what to go out on because this is all before the show was launched <laughs> so we'll just end it right here i believe but, in you yeah uh thanks for thanks for joining me man cool yeah thank you all right